So if you have all this knowledge, <laughs> right? <laughs> What's wrong with you? What? <laughs> let's let's analyze you Talk for to a me. second. Let's do it. So what? I'm just really interested to know because you mentioned you have a daughter. Listen, it's the message right here. Black boy, tell me how you really feel. Cause I just wanna build with you. Black girl, tell me how you really feel. I wanna keep it real with you. I wanna live better, eat better. I wanna love better, sleep better. Yeah, I wanna feel. I think that's one of the downsides. That is actually one of the downsides to pretty privilege. And I don't know if that people talk about it a lot. Talk to me. But I think that when you're an attractive person, especially if you didn't really have anyone there to mentor you to cultivate skills and instill value in you, you rely on your appearance because that's the first thing that you get attention for from men, right? And so subconsciously you tell yourself, okay, my value is in how I look. And so women are leading with that. They're not developing their other skills. But then you have the plain Jane. She doesn't really have that privilege, right? So she got to prove herself. She has to be all these great things internally so that men, when they see her, she can be on an equal playing field as the attractive woman with the pretty privilege. And so I think that we acknowledge that as us having a lead or an advantage, but in the end, it shoots us in the foot. And that's why there's so many Instagram models, very attractive women. Those are the ones single. who are single. single. And we're like, what the heck is going on? Why can't I find anybody? But the plain Janes are the ones getting wiped up. Listen, I tell women, men are, men are smarter than we get credit for. Mm -hmm. we're smarter than sometimes we're able to even articulate. And the reality is, you know, going back to Kevin Samuels, he talks about, you know, the scale of one to 10. Most men, especially men who've been outside, they understand that nines and tens are not wives. Maybe that would be the title. <laughs> nines and tens are not wives. Yeah. The wife zone is like six to seven. I mean, five to seven. Let's say five, five to seven. Five to seven. Five to seven is the wife zone. Okay. If God just loves you, he'll give you an eight. Wow. If you're his chosen warrior, he'll give you a nine. <laughs> but like, I remember there was a white dude that did something called the crazy hot matrix. Mm -hmm. And he was like, you know, as a woman gets higher and hot, she yes, gets higher and yes, crazy. Yeah. Right. So, so <laughs> men understand in life is trade-offs on the low end. If she got big titties, she ain't gonna have an ass. <laughs> she has an ass. She ain't gonna have big titties. Right? She has a face, she might not have either one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if she has all three, she might be a man. So we understand <laughs> we understand his trade-offs in life, right? Yeah. And we at some point when we've gotten we sold our royal oats, we got out of, of of out of our system, we're thinking about a good long-term partner. I think because women haven't taken the time to really understand how men operate, mm -hmm. they're still fixated on the high school boys mm -hmm. and then the, the celebrities. So how can I compete for Chris Brown versus how can I compete for this good man in my town? Mm. Yeah. And thinking that what Chris Brown wants is reflective of what men want. No, it's reflective of what men will sleep with. Mm. But it's not what men want. Men want you to be clean. Men want you to smell good. Men want you to move. And, and it's funny, like, as I've matured in my pimping, as I've, as I've gotten older and gotten more refined, um... I can see two women, one that is drop dead gorgeous, but I can be turned off by when she opens her mouth, mm -hmm. whether we're talking about a hygiene thing or whether we're talking about a, her ability to articulate her diction, you know, her movement, a lot of the different things that at 17, I'm, man, fuck all that, look at her. Mm -hmm. Versus a woman here who might be, if we're just being objective, she's a five, but she moves like a motherfucker. And she sound like her voice sounds like Tweety Bird singing. And, and, and she just smell like daisies are supposed to. Because flowers don't smell. But, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She mm -hmm. is going to kill this woman five, ten days out of the week. Mm -hmm. But a lot of, a lot of, I think a lot of our women are spending so much time and spending so much effort just trying to look like the bad bitch. Yeah. Versus the soft, softer What's your skin feel like? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We're not all blessed with bone structure. What's your skin feel like? What's your hygiene? How do you move? How do you talk? Mm -hmm. What's the volume, your diction? How well do you articulate yourself? How well read are you? That's what's going to captivate somebody and be like, 
Even if her vagina doesn't work, I want to be around her. Yes. But you over here relying on your wife. That's cool. Mm-hmm. That's cool. I had wife before. <laughs> what happens when menopause hits and it dries up? Ooh, talk to old Sahara Desert. <laughs> You know, so yeah. So if you have all this knowledge, <laughs> right? <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> let's let's analyze you Talk for to a me. second. Let's do it. So what? I'm just really interested to know because you mentioned you have a daughter. So in the the situation with her mother, do you feel like you understood the importance of a family unit at that time? Did you really? make an effort to make it work. I just want to know a little bit more about that. Yes. Yes. Um, the circumstances were interesting because we decided we weren't going to be together. And then we found out she was pregnant and then we try to make mm-hmm. it work. And we're still in the process of trying to figure things out. Um, but I think also, I guess my problem, my problem is I am not as patient as people might think. Um, I'm patient with strangers um, because I look at it purely from a like a research perspective and like a work perspective. But with people in my life, I think one of my shortcomings is I have really high expectations. And I'm like, as much time as I spend um, talking about how things should be, it's certain shit I shouldn't have to tell you. Um, Is that a good thing? No. Mm -hmm. I'm working on it. Mm -hmm. Work in progress. Um, And then also being 29, my priority right now, my priority right now is my daughter. But right after that is work Mm -hmm. and trying to uh trying to create a future that can sustain the things and the people that I care about. And because of that, romantic investment is something that I don't want to do half half-assed. Mm-hmm. And because of what it is that I'm doing, I don't know if I have the bandwidth to be able to do that. Now with my daughter's mom, it's a little different because we have a kid. Mm -hmm. Um, And I understand, you know, the optimal situation is that we're together. And that's something that's tugging at me, you know, because I'm still idealistic. But I think what stopped me so far is the fact that my priority has just been, I got to feed this girl. Do you think that you making things work with her mother can be linked to you prioritizing her though? I've thought about that. Mm -hmm. I've thought about that. I think my hesitation with that though is a lot of us, including myself, grew up in situations where if our parents were being real, they were just together for us. And at some point you could sense it. You're like, man, I'm not really just go your separate way because this shit is exhausting. Mm -hmm. So I never wanted to be that. And we've had that conversation where it's like, I want to choose you because I chose you. Mm -hmm. Not because of some sense of responsibility, because that's not sustainable. Because at some point, either I will or you'll feel like, um, I just did this so I don't get fined. Mm -hmm. I just did this so, and then our kid is going to feel the same way. Um, So it's best we take the time to, if we're going to choose each other, it's because we chose each other. Not because of some sense of responsibility to her. And, and I think, honestly, that's another part of the general hesitation with, with marriage these days. Because a lot of us did grow up in a situation, yeah, our parents were together, but they, I don't even know why they, you know what I'm saying? I don't even know why. So, so I think our generation, millennials, are saying, nah, if I'm not going to just do this because it's the thing I'm supposed to do at 30. Mm-hmm. Or the thing I'm supposed to do after I have a kid. Mm-hmm. Um, now... Like I told her mom, they're always going to be taken care of. I'm the pappy. She's, she's going to be straight. Yeah. Regardless um, regardless of how idealistic our situation is. Um, but yeah, like I said, we're still... I mean, she's two. We got time. 
Yeah. <laughs> we got time.